Good evening guys and welcome to Watches and Wheels YouTube channel. Tonight's video is going to be about my 1964 L&R Varimatic watch cleaning machine. It's kind of ironic that my watch cleaning machine is made in 1964 and stuff you've been watching on my channel has 1964 Dodge Polara 500 stuff in it. So it's funny that the Dodge Polara in the garage and my L&R Varimatic watch cleaning machine were made in the same year. Now this video is going to be about um, repairing and showing you guys around this thing and showing you the inside of it and how it works because it's a mechanical marvel. It truly is. Uh, recently one of the micro switches went bad and I started having problems with the actual machine itself. It would only wash one cycle and then shut off. So if you hold on just for a second. I'm going to take you out to my kitchen table because I didn't want to work in the garage. It's too dang cold out there right now. I'm going to show you around this thing and let you check it out. It's pretty cool. So I'll see you in a second. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you for a tour of all the components of this machine before I actually turn it on and fire it up and show you how actually while it's working. And it is a mechanical marvel, truly. It is. So we get down to the bottom of the machine and you're going to notice three switches here. I'm going to point to them with this screwdriver. you got three micro switches here and you've got two micro switches here. And if you look on this shaft there is a cam with notches cut in it. And as the machine runs, those switches will turn on and off respectfully so that it will run the mechanical operations of the cleaning machine. So you've got the first top switch right here, a little bugger right there. And that one controls the basket motor operation. So that switch turns on and off the motor runs the basket right here which is where your watch parts are going to be in we'll come around to that in a second and then you got another switch right here that's stacked right below it and that controls the motor for the hydraulic pump so we're going to go around over here on the back side have a look at this thing i'll move my lights so we can get some good lighting in here Here is this massive electric motor which runs a pump and a worm gear which does two operations. One is it controls the pump right here, the hydraulic pump, and it also turns what I'll call, I guess you could call a turnstile with an arm right here. It's going to turn the table with the jars on it. So now that pump motor runs, switch turns on, hydraulic pump right here, pistons here, and it's got a big hard line over here that runs to the very center of the machine under the table. And what that does is is that it pumps fluid into this line and it raises the entire motor assembly all the way up to clear the jars and then that big steel arm right there over here with a big pin on it turns counterclockwise and slides into the notches under the table so it turns the whole table goes to the first jar which is the cleaning solution it then turns off the pump and then it allows the hydraulic pressure out and then the basket will go into the jar and then the, the switch will turn on which there's two switches right here if you look on the actual right here there's one there and then there's one below it. Now those two switches are wired in series between that one 
and that one. And then what those do is they operate start and stop and know that when the cycle is over so that it will turn on the motor again to actually sling off all of the solvent or cleaner in the jar and then go to the next cycle. And then over here in the front I think I'll move my light around so you can see this better. Because I don't know how this is working. I'll move my light around here. We'll take our time here. Because this is pretty cool. I think you'll find this interesting. Worth your time. And right here is an electric motor. Well, look at this old school fan blade. Isn't that cute? Look at the size of that heater coil. 300 watts. You could light a cigar off this thing. On the last cycle, the basket will drop into the turntable and it will spin dry all the watch parts. All mechanical, fully mechanical. There's no electronic device, there's no board, there's no computer in this thing at all. And then to adjust each of the cleaning cycles, for each jar, there's a little screw knob on top here. You look at that right there, you see a little screw knob. You could turn that inward, and as you turn it inward, it has a set of threads that stick through. Well, as the table turns, there is an electric timer right here that trips a little, little lever that controls the timing of how long the watch parts will be in their respective jars. And then over here, we've got a rheostat or a resistor, which you can control the speed of the motor. So you don't want to be going too fast and slinging your parts all over the place. Pretty nifty, eh? All right, so I'm gonna fire this thing up. I'm gonna show you how it works. And then it's fully mechanical. Just, it's just so cool. Well, before I do that, I'll say one more thing. The problem I had with it was that it would go into the cleaning cycle in the jar, and then it would wash the parts, and then it would stop. So, after doing some diagnostics, I realized that this top micro switch, which I've got right here, and these are old. Look at these old buggers. They're supposed to click like that. On off, on off, right? Look at this one. Nothing. It's broken. Doesn't do nothing. So I had a heck of a time finding these, but of all places, turns out they're selling them on Amazon. Hot dog, huh? So now I've got, they come in a five pack, so there's five switches. So now if I have a problem with any other switches, I can replace them. And then servicing this thing is pretty much, you've got a tank for the hydraulic oil, and then there's like a little dipstick in here. You can actually take this out, and you can actually little dipstick in here, check the oil, make sure there's enough oil in it, because you don't want it to run dry, because it's hydraulic. You'll see that in a second, because it's pretty cool. And then grease everything up and just service it. So I'm going to turn this thing on by pushing the button to start. And you got the parts. in and just like a washing machine it starts to wash your parts so I'm gonna trip this right here I'm gonna move the timer so it's in opposition, so you can actually watch it. So now what it'll do is it'll lift up, it'll spin all the solvent off, real nice. I'm gonna lift it up, turn the table, now we're going to the rinse 
side ball. Hot dog, huh? Now we're washing the, the parts. Now usually when there's liquid in there, the liquid will... There we go. The liquid actually would slow it down. I'm running it dry right now. So now you've got, it's in the second rinse, first rinse. And then you're gonna go to the third rinse. And watch what happens when you do that. I trip this. Activates the arm. Now the arm, the pump, the hydraulic pump is operating and it's turning the turntable. As you can see, isn't that cool? Now we go into the next jar, which is the last rinse, the cleanest rinse. And then you've got right here, you've got a switch that turns on the ultrasonic, which I've got in the other room in the watch shop. I'll go in there and I'll show you that then in a second. So then once it's done, which I'm, I'm going fast here just to show you how this works, but... It's going to do the spin cycle just like an actual washing machine does. Coal gets really, really hot. And then it's drying the parts. Just like that. So after that's done with the cycle, check this out. Now the parts are done drying. And the machine shuts off. Hot dog, huh? Isn't that cool? This thing was made 1964. So I'm going to take you in and I'm going to show you the ultrasonic. Now this isn't showing a whole lot, but this is the actual ultrasonic unit. And to tell you the truth, I don't really know how it works. I know it uses a big old, some kind of light bulb in there. And it vibrates above the basket now when I got this I took it apart and I actually the fan the cooling fan for the the bulb or whatever it's called or some kind of funky looking bulb in here that operates it so I ended up taking the original fan out and putting a really big one here to blow cool air through this thing so that it works ultrasonic definitely makes a difference and it still works after all these years. It's going on like with 60 years. So there's not much to really report with that thing. <laughs> I don't really know. I haven't really gotten into the technical aspects of that thing, but let me show you this thing. So here is what the original advertisement for the 64 of Aromatic. Look at that price. $374.50. For that thing just for just for the machine right and if you want the actual ultrasonic unit it's $290 this is 1964 now so if you add them up in 1964 it was $664.50 to buy the machine and to buy the ultrasonic unit which if you do in currency conversion for inflation from 1964 to 2021 that adds up to $5,537.37 so that's what that thing cost and I gotta tell you a cleaning machine today will run you $4,000, $5,000 minimally and at, a, and at 50 some dollars a gallon for cleaning solution and that's excluding the rinse Dirty watches, you can only wash about 25 watches in the size of those jars. So you can see that it's not cheap at all. So, how about that? Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video and 
I hope you really enjoyed it actually because I enjoyed making it. Now you get a chance to see something pretty cool you might not have seen before. But there is one more thing I want to show you guys before I close this video off. Be right back. For anybody that owns one of these things and is trying to fix it or diagnose problems, there isn't really a whole lot of information out there to help you. You really have to, there, there's no repair guy for these anymore and, and the few guys that probably did repair them don't repair them anymore. So you're going to have to really, you know, be knowledgeable of electrical and how to understand switches and wiring schematics and how pumps work and electric motors because these things can be repaired. But there's one thing that I did not know that I want to show you guys and it's not going to probably matter unless someone actually watches this video and is trying to fix one of these things. There's a really key important thing that you need to know about this, and that is proper indexing of everything. Because if this arm ever gets out of sync, it throws the whole system off. So one thing that I did not know, it took me an hour to sync this thing up to get this thing to run correctly and everything was in time. So what I suggest you do if you buy one of these machines, and if you can even find a machine like this today, you're gonna probably spend between six and eight hundred dollars for it if you're lucky. That's even if it works, let alone how much it costs to ship it, because this mother effort is heavy, really heavy. But I marked, when you open it up, there's no marks here. So I put paint marks. So if you're looking and watching this video, you'll be able to see where the paint marks are in relationship to where it is indexed correctly. And if you look down in there, I'll get you a flashlight, you can see. See that mark? That mark lines up with the mark that's on the worm drive. That's important to know because if you got it screwed up or it's screwed up because if these micro switches go bad, it'll throw the whole thing out of whack. And if you don't know what, where everything was, it's going to take you forever to figure out how to index it so that it's in the start position. Everything has to be correct. Or it throws the whole thing out of whack. Eh? <laughs> Alright. Well, I hope it helps. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Because I'll tell you what, not many people have ever seen the inside of one of these things. I mean, look, they even stamped 64 on the main body, main base plate of this thing. There's a date there, August 19th, 1964. What a cool machine. They don't make them like they used to. Have a good night, guys.